There's so many times where I try to do things at work. Like right now, I'm, I'm doing a, a ClickUp album, right? It's making mm -hmm. like, for what? Like for what? Why are you making music for ClickUp? And it's not a bad question, but I'll tell yeah. you what, it's because I love music and mm -hmm. I want to do it. And I, I, and I think I can find a way to bring music back to marketing. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I learned a lesson. But if I'm right, I've tried something new and I've started something no one else has. Dude, yeah. And also too, like people that's gone viral, like on TikTok, for example, it's because they're one song went viral music music is, is crazy what music is doing and it's crazy what tiktok is doing to music yeah. to go viral if you if you're making music and you're not trying to get like those people dancing to your song yeah or at least using your song in a clever way or making a sound out of your song one of my friends is tej tej patel is incredible dude he took this uh key glock song and he just took this sound because he's a photographer and a videographer and he was like so you're an artist are you good i'm sure you've seen that one it's like mm. if you haven't it's on tiktok it's like so you're an artist it's like, are you good at it? And it's like, bow, bow, bitch, That's I'm him. in my bag. And it's like, yeah. that song plays. And it's like, with every beat, the, the, the shot changes. Became the most used song, period. Kim, Kim K used it, all that. Key Glock's song went through the roof. You can look at the date when he posted it on the charts and see when it went off. And that's how powerful it is. Yeah, and he's like a trap rapper, too. Trap rapper, but right? But yet, Kim K can use it or a fashion designer from New York can use it. A 12-year-old photographer, anyone can use that sound, right? It, it, it brought everything back together. And that's, again, something someone might have told him at the beginning or a limiting belief, as we spoke about, could have came through his head saying, like, you know what? This trap beat won't make sense with photography. Mm -hmm. But he ignored all that because he loves trap and he loves photography. So he brought them together. So when you love something and it may not make sense to anyone else, bring it together. Mm. I bring everything I love together because I'm going to work harder at something I love and I'm more passionate about than just something I don't that I think – the masses want me to bring together. Yeah. And that masses is usually the masses of like your thoughts, not even like a real thing. It's not a real, mostly, mostly things are, thoughts are, thoughts can be whatever you want it to be, right? A thought yeah. can be serving you. It, I mean, a thought is a very powerful thing. I should never say it's not a real thing, but a thought that comes into your head doesn't have to be real. Mm -hmm. It's if you accept it and then put it out there and make it real, right? But if a thought just comes in your head and you're like, that's an, like, I, I swear I love this term. I, I can't remember where I read it. I probably stole it from someone, but error thought. Like the moment it comes in my head, it's, it's like, that's an error thought. Mm -hmm. You know, like, oh, Chris, you couldn't do this, or people won't like that. That doesn't air thought, because who knows? Yeah. Who knows? But if I say they will like it, and I put it out there and go for it, great. And sometimes it doesn't mean it's always going to happen. But if I keep that air thought, it definitely won't. And it's usually just, like, made up. It's like, my teacher said I would not be successful. <laughs> it's like, dude, I don't know anyone that actually had a teacher tell them that, right? Like, is that real? There's not many teachers, except you, unless you were the teacher's pet. Yeah. And those are the ones who usually weren't as successful. Yeah. You know, like, I was definitely a rebel in school. Um, I still had good grades and stuff, but I wasn't number one in my class for sure. But I was out there having fun, still doing decent on my tests. But yeah, I wasn't the number one. The teacher's like, oh, you're definitely going to be successful. Yeah, you're a hillbilly from the Midwest too, like me, right? <laughs> yeah, a, you can call me that. Yeah, I'm, I'm from a small town. My mom is from Jersey, so I've always spoken fast. Like I have this very fast pace of speech. It's hard for me to slow down. Yeah. But you can hear the accent. Like I'm definitely a southern guy. It might be the Cuban espresso, whatever that is. Yeah, he gave me before we came yeah. in. <laughs> No, that's me always, man. Um, but I talk fast from a small town. Love being from a small town. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure you do, too. I think it gives you a different perspective. Uh, and I really hope everyone from a small town does realize how quick they can get out here in this world. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people, I remember growing up, they're like, oh, I, I need to come back home to do this job because that's what, you know, makes sense for me. Mm -hmm. It's like, why not try to learn one of these skills? And three months, you can learn anything with YouTube. Look at all the things you're into. Mm -hmm. Like, you're from a small town. How many different things are you into? Because... I know of like four or five, and I know you're into more. I know you're into crypto. I know you're into real estate. Mm -hmm. I know you're into other business moves. I know you're into podcasting now. Mm. What else? Well, I think it's what we were talking about, right? Like not going into a box. And so, excuse me, for me, it's I'm into myself in terms of building my personal brand. And it doesn't always have to be necessarily like what I know. It's what somebody else knows. So the light bulb went off for me a couple months ago. I'm like, okay, where do I get more time back? Where do I get the highest ROI? That's the best resource. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's always time and money. That's usually what our thoughts are filled with. Uh, time and money, you know, to be able to do X, Y, Z. And so for me, I'm like, I have resistance and friction, creating content, putting things out there. It's a full-time job. You know what I mean? It's 24-7, 365. But I don't want it to control me. It started to control me a little bit. What's the most simple, scalable, and most authentic to Tyler Bosetti. You put me in front of a camera long enough, I'm going to say some dumb shit I don't even agree with, you know? <laughs> but you put me in front of a camera, you try to script me, you try to tell me what to say, this and that. Ah, I just, I, I can feel that resistance. I just, 
started to figure out more who I am, what I'm about, what I enjoy, this is the most simple way for me to do that. And the most simple way for me to share value, have fun, and expand everything else that I'm doing. Oh, I want to do a real estate deal? Talk about it on the show. I want to release something for free. I want to give you a shout out for an event that you might be doing or something that you need. Boom, 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 boom. Most, 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 most importantly, I've spent time, energy, sacrifices, risk, et cetera, to be able to even have you here right now, right? 100%. And then in reality, it's selfish. I just want to get to know you more. I want to become more valuable for you. And that doesn't have to be money. That could just be the energy. Like we're boys. You need help with something. You have a flat tire. Do you, whatever, right? And so in reality, it's like that's quote unquote breaking even in business. It's just our relationship is better. We're deeper level. You know how refreshing that feels? I've never heard this on a podcast. You mm -hmm. know, I think I think so many people truly believe you have to script everything, right? Oh, we mm -hmm. need these bullet. We didn't script anything. So many people believe you have to have bullet points. But why can't a podcast be getting to know someone better? Because who knows what's going to come out of it? A lot of our truest thoughts come out of just speaking like this. Mm -hmm. We're more natural. The moment you try to script things, I know when I'm scripted, same as you're saying earlier. When I'm scripted, I'm going to say what I think the world wants to hear, yeah. right? Rather than what I need to, like, rather than what I need to share. And also too. Guess what, dude? We can have you come right back on again. I'm, I want to start my own. We'll do it again. We'll yeah. go back and forth. We'll do it 700 more times if we need to. If you're like, yo, dude, can I come back on the show and talk about this yeah. one thing for 15 minutes, 30 minutes? Sure. Why not? Why not? And then the same, like, once my friends see this, there can be more people we can connect. Mm -hmm. I got friends that I want that I really want you to know. Mm -hmm. And now the best way to introduce them is right here. Yeah. I can have you, I can have them sit right in this seat. You, you can know nothing about them. I can have them sit right in this seat. They can talk to you. Yeah. 30 minutes, they know you. They both have, you have content. But people have got to realize how important content is. I mean, Gary Vee's been screaming it, and people still aren't listening. It's like, we. I'm glad we're finally doing it. Yeah, I'm all into, like, I'm, I'm an investor. I'm an entrepreneur. So I'm very creative spiritual but boom big chunk of me is data so well data leads everything right so when these people want to come on or we know we we both know they need to come on here right mm -hmm. or somebody else's show doesn't matter i just go all right i'm gonna do like the creative flow side of it of like but then also 90 percent of it's going to be this is the benefits of you coming on here here's the data here's what the charts are doing Here's previous people that I've had on. Here's the attention that you're going to get. Boom, 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 boom. Remove friction. Remove resistance. What's because that's when I wasn't creating. That's when I wasn't exponentially growing is when there was that resistance. How do we remove that for people to top on here and have fun? I meant to ask you that. I can see, look, I'm a lot of my role is content, right? At least mm. it is now. And at the beginning, I was just more worried about content for others, content for my company. But now I've realized like, for me to be the best guy in this space, for me to be known in the influencer space, in the tech space, I need to be one myself. Mm -hmm. Like I need to be I need to be in here going after the same journey they are. But for you, being an entrepreneur, like you are busy, you are running multiple companies, right? My main focus is ClickUp. And me making content for ClickUp helps ClickUp. But for you at the beginning, I could see it being tough to be like, oh, you know what? In that time I could shoot videos, I could close two more business deals. But now I'm really happy you're seeing it the other way. It's like, well, what about this content I create puts me in front of my next business deal, right? Like, think of the DMs you're gonna start getting from this. I don't know much how long you've been creating your content. I've been watching it for like the past like, couple months, and I'm like, damn, it's good to see Tyler posting like this. Because I know many people have come to me, how many people I've met, how many opportunities I've, I've received just by making the content and putting it out there. Not not caring too much about the numbers. Like, it's not about everyone going viral either. Everyone thinks about that. It's getting viral to the right people, you know, getting mm -hmm. it from the right people. And I'm still building that audience, and you will too. Yeah, absolutely. And there's no perfect way like if you're feeling friction to get on the camera and have like long version content well just know there's other options like <laughs> yeah now there's there's written chat. content yeah you can chat write gpt twitter yeah you can linkedin linkedin is incredible for for written you can write blogs i mean you look at this guy lenny lenny blew up off having an amazing blog and now it's a podcast and he was mm. really just crushing it on linkedin i can name you so many people who pick a platform and then crush it and then kind of expand to the others. But there's a guy named Toby who I work with at ClickUp um, and he works at Shopify. Mm. The guy is incredible. He crushed his LinkedIn post, go viral, viral, hasn't made a video, just writes. Yeah. And just like the purpose behind it as well, right? Like you may not even know what that purpose or outcome that you're seeking and that outcome that you're seeking can evolve. 
You might be talking about credit one day, then real estate, this and that. Now, obviously, you got to be careful because you don't want your audience to get, quote unquote, confused. But Mm -hmm. at the same time, like it's no one really fucking knows what they're doing. (laughs) Everyone thinks they do. But like we said earlier, tie it back, like tie it back to your main thing. But I'm going to challenge you and, and the audience here. Like, this is one thing I noticed. Most people do get caught into one type. They think it's just video, and they don't do the written. And I was that person, but I met this guy, Devin, Devin McPaul, and he really, like, was like, hey, you should focus more on the written for your content, too. So he starts helping me. We work together, and I learned kind of how to, wh- what the trends look like, what it looks like to to take something and then to create good content about it that people want to read. And just, you know, six weeks ago when ChatGBT came out, I had a tweet go viral, man. I mean, viral. And all I did was there were all these people posting these prompts. Like, hey, if you want to learn ChatGPT, here's like 15 prompts you can type into. And so rather than just giving 15, we took like two, three days, made an incredible resource in a ClickUp doc, of course. Mm. And uh, and it had prompts for every single type of job. Are you a marketer? Are you a copywriter? Uh, do you run ads? Here are prompts. You, here, here's how you can really use ChatGPT to get ahead. So we had 165 mm. prompt files. So we just 20 x what everyone else did and put it out there. And man, the internet just ran. And I gained like 20,000 followers from it. It was huge. So you never know. And and now I'm a little bit more in a different position than Twitter now. So a lot of my tweets get more views. And with the new updates, you can see the exact number of views that you get. So I definitely challenge people to look at your time in Twitter. can really put out more than just your videos. Sometimes, depending on how you are. But you should be doing all of it. And soon people might probably be putting video on Twitter. I put video on LinkedIn now. It does pretty well. Uh, video, video on uh, Twitter that is just turning the camera on i'm talking about taking the same content we're doing here and putting it on twitter yeah i i I haven't say i don't know if it's working as well yet but it is on linkedin with without edits i believe i think just like oh like raw i'm taking a shit and i want to talk about why you need to get a squatty potty (laughs) you know maybe you're in health or something squatty potty better pay you up oh yeah come on (laughs) squatty potty where you at i think cubans invested (laughs) yeah But that's, I think that's where Twitter has a, a big opportunity because it's that's a good point. pretty niche it's down. Quick. I'm seeing it with some of my friends that have huge followings on there. They're just going uh, on, a, on a hike in the woods. Like they're in like the spiritual space. So they talk about how they just go on a walk for an hour a day and like the benefits of it. But they literally just go to a new tweet, click the camera button, record, post it. Damn, he's taught me something. I have not seen that one yet. Very easy to do. Twitter spaces was working pretty well for me about a couple months ago. I've slowed it down because tweets are doing so well. Mm-hmm. But just just the audio, just hopping in because you can do it anywhere. You don't have to look any certain type of way. You can be walking, be on your way to work, mm. on a commute, whatever. Um, so spaces were starting to do pretty well. And I'm sure they'll keep keep moving. What so for you now that you're creating some personal content that feeds into other things that you're doing? It sounds like ClickUp is essentially like the core the core piece that you're trying to flow your personal attention to, uh, let the audience know what what is ClickUp and why should they consider using it? Probably should have done that, yeah. So ClickUp is project management software. Uh, for those of you not familiar, it's all your work, all your work in one place. In the morning, you probably wake up, you open up your email, hopefully it's Gmail, maybe it's Outlook, you probably open up your calendar, your tasks somewhere, uh, maybe Google Docs, any type of docs you have, your notes, all these different things you have, you spread them out and you have tons of tabs. ClickUp puts it all in one place, makes it very fun and easy to use. Uh, so we actually have a, a new version coming out soon, so we're really excited mm-hmm. to roll 3.0. Nice. We have our Level Up conference on the 28th, so we're very excited about that. It's a virtual conference. We have Jim Quick speaking. I don't know if you've seen him, the author of Limitless. He's been a lot of Dan Fleischman's events and more. Okay. Um, we got Charlie Rocket. I know you're familiar yeah, with yeah, him. Yeah. Charlie's on there. Um, so we got a lot of cool people coming, um, speakers from the CMO of HubSpot, and basically just trying to teach people how to be more productive this year. It's virtual, a lot of, a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, a lot, a lot coming up for ClickUp, but my main focus is ClickUp. With my content, with everything I do, I mean, ClickUp's a, in my heart and soul. You know, we created it five years ago, just four of us. And like we were talking about earlier, a lot of people, we had these error thoughts, right? A lot of people like, this space is insane for you to jump in. Mm. There are hundreds and hundreds of companies that have tons of funding, tons of funding. There's, there's ex-founders from Facebook and so many other big companies. Yeah. How are you going to stand out and compete in such a crowded space? And... You know, Zeb was very, very adamant that he could build something better with Alex Sharkowski, and they were right. You know, they could build something they could compete by being more customizable and by kind of not making people work a certain way. Mm. So a lot of my content, I think, is is really based around trying to tell the ClickUp story, but also show where we're going. And that's where I'm still trying to improve, show the product, because ClickUp can be used differently by every single type of person, and I want everyone to know that. 
which is essentially you in a nutshell. When I think of you as like what we were just talking about, I can combine music into what I'm doing. Like you don't have to be in a box, right? That no box. box is just imaginary. And uh, that makes sense. I think you can you know, show that because you're like, oh, wait, I've done this myself. And even for employees, I think that it's easier for us because we're entrepreneurs, we're investors, right? We're always thinking of like being the top dog the business, right? Most people should not be an entrepreneur. No, right? no. There's many benefits to just being an employee and living a great life that way. But if you want to become more valuable as an employee, I think by far the number one thing you can do is start creating content on your personal brand around the mission and the vision of the company that you work for if you enjoy working there because you're going to be able to start sharing data and numbers and bring more money in by bringing an audience in. You read my mind. So click up, we started this whole like internal influencer program. And if they want to come up to us, I don't care, you know, whatever, whatever title you are, we will help them create the content. We'll edit it for them and allow them to post because we want them to grow. We want more people to see it because think about it. Everyone thinks you have to be at the top to watch content. But what if I'm someone who just wants to be, you know, a, a product manager? Yeah. What if I just want to be in, in customer service and tech? People want, whatever role you have, there's someone else who wants to have it, especially nowadays, right? Like there's someone yeah. who wants to get into that role, especially at tech companies. So it is very valuable for a solutions engineer to come on and say, hey, look, this is how I became a solutions engineer at ClickUp. This is what a day looks like for me. This is what I wish I knew before I started. All those things are huge. Mm -hmm. All those things are valuable because at some point, if someone is looking to get better, they're going to want to learn. And why not be from you? Because not everyone wants to be a CEO. Not everyone wants to be, you know, like me, jumping around marketing. Some people just want a regular there's a certain niche job in tech, yeah. and those are not talked about enough. So the, you really nailed it. The more the merry of that content, and it makes you more valuable for your company. And look, even if you don't stay there forever, you still add a value to that company, and you're still showing yourself as a thought leader at a strong company, showing what you do. Yeah, dude, that is huge. I like that a lot. I think that's one way to build a better culture. Um, other Chris, our boy Chris Vasquez, was yeah. just on here, and we were talking about uh, people, right? Everything starts with people because— I think it's easy to get a little lost into um, the best CRM or management tool to use. Do you use Gmail? Do you send calendar invites? How do you automate this through that? How do you delegate? Well, in order to do any of that, it's people. So people, processes, then profit. Most people are thinking profit and processes first versus people. So what do you do? You empower your people to understand they can implement this process to make more money for the company, for them. I like that influencer, uh, internal influencer challenge or whatever you, you just You got said. it. And, and look, to another step, it can be internal influencers or it can be external, right? So let's say like I have external influencers, people who love using ClickUp, people I will happily train to use ClickUp because it's so valuable for me. And it's, it's I, don't, I don't want people to just come to ClickUp's social and they probably don't to learn about ClickUp, right? But if they see an employee... Someone they relate to, like let's say one of my employees, Liam, who's like, not my employee, but one of our employees, Liam, who's just an incredible, you know, engineer. I've heard him when he's talking on sales calls. He really explains the product well. I would want to learn from him. That's why I was like, Liam, you got to make content for us. You know, you you describe ClickUp in such a cool way. So I want him doing that. Another turn, there's a guy, um, Francesca from Keep Productive. Everyone knows him in a space for teaching people how to be productive. So why wouldn't I allow him to teach some people ClickUp? You know, so not just learning from the brand. So maybe like even in your world, you know, at your companies, there could be some of your employees they want to learn from because from, they can relate mostly to them. Yeah, that's I like that a lot because when we're entrepreneurs, it's always I got this. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. And I've said this on the last like probably every show. Uh, it's every time I'm thinking through some things, it's like it's the who. Every time it's like, okay, we need to double down in this area with content or with this, this or this. It's super natural to go, all right, maybe I'll plug that into the podcast or maybe I'll text this person, this or that, right? It's no, who on the team might be able to create that to double down. And they may actually be better than the owner because we got this instead of, yeah, that's what needs to be done. You got this. Yeah. Damn, I, I just have a point too. With the who, the who is such a good thing. Also, it's another reason why you make content. Like, the who. I know when I think of real estate, I know I'm thinking of you. You know, I know mm -hmm. I'm thinking of you right away. When I know I think of, 
um, recruiting, I'm thinking of Chris, who's just sitting right here because Chris is the best at recruiting, right? And the more content he puts out showing that, so will other people know that. Mm. I have someone, when I think of podcasting, I think of Carson. You mm. know, like when I, I know who's really good at, at whatever. Mm -hmm. One, because they're making content. Two, because we know as you get to a certain point, you start meeting people. Okay, we know who the guy is. Yeah. You know, like that's what really, I remember Fleischman saying this early on as well when I was working for him. He's like, no matter what it is, I know someone, right? And if you're creating content, you're probably going to be at the top of my mind. If someone comes to me and is like, hey, who's good at copywriting? Well, whoever just put a really great video out that I kind of respect and I learned something from, I'm probably going to recommend them because mm. they're teaching me something good. They're probably good at what they do too. What's like the number one issue right now at ClickUp that you guys are trying to solve? Number one issue for us, I would say, is look, we, we really came into a crowded space fast. We had to... We, we really made some big promises at the beginning, one app to replace them all. And we really want to make that true. So I think we've we've grown really fast. I think we've built a lot of features really fast. So I think it's it's slowing down and making sure everything is really efficient. And we're, we're definitely on top of that right now. It's easy to get excited and want to build every single feature. But I think we also need to make sure everything blends and moves together properly. So we're we're really focusing on that now. Uh, but we're still growing features. We're never mm -hmm. going to stop releasing new things and, and bettering the product. I think it's just making sure that we we also think about you know, as more as we add, we also want to make sure those we take care of those simple users, those who just want to log in and create tasks. So we do a good job of allowing you to turn on and turn off features mm -hmm. so you can make it as complex or as simple as you'd like. Um, but I think that's the, the main thing we're focusing on. And how do how does the relationship work with you and, and Zeb? Like when when are things when do you notice a pattern of like bad and good? Like yeah. when are you guys really clicking and yeah, yeah. when are there time of like friction? You know, I think um, with Zeb, Zeb's always on the move. Zeb is Zeb is literally checking every part of the company as a CEO, and it's now a massive company. We've grown extremely fast. He is one of the most involved CEOs I've ever seen. I was a, I was a part of Cvent prior to this. I've seen companies go public, and you know, seen what this is like. But obviously, we're we're making our moves to to do the best we can to get ready to take it to the next level. Um, Zeb's got to be everywhere, but he really has always been a product focused CEO. He loves the product. He loves being involved. So I think Zeb is humming at his best when he can be in the product and be involved. I think there's friction when he has to step away from it and, and touch into other things. So I think it's the big part for him is really growing each side of the house and making sure it's, it's humming as he would like it to. And, you know, as you grow and as you get more people in, that, that can get a little tougher. It's hard to know every little move that goes on. It's hard to know every little, what every single employee is doing. Luckily, we have ClickUp, so we can go in and see a lot of what's moving and what's not. I think the key is just keeping everything scrappy. You know, when you're when it was just four to 20 of us, we knew we were all scrappy. And it was easy to have daily stand-ups and see what everyone's doing. It's tougher mm -hmm. as you get larger. But as long as, I think Zeb does a really good job of repeating himself. He knows what our mission is. And the more he keeps driving our mission home to those leaders, he can make sure they drive it home to the rest of the team. So our mission is to be one app to replace them all, to help people be more productive. We really care about that. The mission hasn't changed. We want everyone to be more productive. We want to save them time. We want them to think work and think click up. And it's a big journey, obviously, but we will keep going until we do where do you think you create the most value in that business partnership? Yeah, yeah. For me, I'm all about getting eyeballs on ClickUp. You know, I'm all about what ClickUp looks like, who's representing ClickUp, um, how we're getting people to the product. That's my thing. What kind of commercials are we doing? How are we getting how are we getting ourselves in front of people? It's a huge thing. And, and again, in a very crowded space, people every day are making new decisions of what they should try for work. My big goal is making them give ClickUp a shot. So whether that be a copywriter who I'm getting to make a really cool resource through ClickUp, so they come to that resource via ClickUp. I'm not just, I'm not just out here asking people to say, "Hey, you should use ClickUp." That doesn't work. Mm. It, it, five years ago, sure, maybe you could hold a water bottle, and say, "Hey, drink this," and da da da. But people are immune to that now. You, in my opinion, especially in tech, you got to give them value and then bring that value in your product. So that's what I do. I give them a resource, a template, a doc, a checklist, something that they can use after getting that information from said influencer or ClickUp post or anything like that. And so I'm, I'm down to hear. I'm down to help anyone build resources. Anything that can help add value to our people, that's what I want. Because even if they don't use ClickUp at first, they will still think of us in a positive light for giving value to them. Absolutely. And the reason why I ask that is, one, most businesses fail. And most. two, most business partnerships fail. I know what it's like to be an entrepreneur and be in business with another entrepreneur. A lot of times people are in business and there's a lopsided entrepreneurship. But what I take away is, to give like a personal example, anytime there's been friction at the top for us, it's because there's not communication. And usually at the top, even at an executive role, people are not essentially like in their lane and or 
communicating, hey, how do I bring you value as a business partner? Vice versa. Okay, this is what I think you need to be doing less of, more of. What gives you energy? What takes away energy, right? So if you're in there building the products, boom, 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 there might be some conflict with you and Zeb, right? He's just like, dude, get us more eyeballs, right? <laughs> yeah. Go set up the event with speakers and all the people you know and wear the crazy socks and the outfits that yeah. you do, right? Well, I got more right now. If I uh, if I walked into Zeb's office and said, hey, <laughs> this is what I think we should do in the product, he'd probably laugh. But and, and yes and no. So we have like channels, right? We're very, communic- very, very communicative at ClickUp. We want everyone to speak their ideas. We have a whole channel, and I know Zeb checks it, where anyone has an idea, they can throw it in there. There's no bad, there's no, yeah, any idea could be good, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so we always want people to throw out their ideas. Now, I'm not going to walk in and be like, hey, this is exactly what we should do with the product. Um, but if I have a cool idea, I'll throw it in there. And you never know what could be used. There's definitely ideas I've had that maybe in different ways get used or maybe they're already working on. But yeah, everyone should definitely stay in their lane. I think we're, we do a good job of that. Everyone knows their team. Uh, we really stick to KPIs. You know, like I, I know that I need to get more eyeballs on ClickUp. I know that I need to get more impressions to ClickUp. Yeah. That's when I focus on more signups to ClickUp. That's what I'm focusing on. So as long as I'm tracking towards that, I know I'm doing my job well. So there's, it's very clear, very clear. Same with the SEO team. Same with the product team. They know what they need to get to. And by setting, helping set those goals, and, and then again, repeating, he's really good at repeating himself why we need to get to those goals, why, mm-hmm. how it's going to help people save more time. Then everything makes sense. You understand why you're working towards it. You don't have to question it, and you can feel excited about moving towards it. Yeah, because there can just be a lot of assumptions made, right? Even with employees, the bottom, the top, sideways, left and right. And I think that's that's the key right there that you said. It's the why. I'm starting a podcast to build my personal brand so everything else grows. That's why I'm doing it. Right? Simple. So you're, you're one step ahead, right? Same with you. But we're also measuring it here and here. And then just ideally put a timeline to it to say, look, in three months or in 30 days, we'll continue to measure these things to make sure there's mutual value. One plus one equals three in business. Yeah. So cool. People know what ClickUp is and, and why they should consider using it. Um, I want to come back a little bit because I feel like every time I watch a video about you, it's like something different you've done or you're doing. And, uh, and I love it because you've tried a lot of stuff. It's like a lot of the bats. Yeah. Yeah. Swing away. Yeah. And, and that's not always the case for everyone, but like most, most times you gotta, you gotta try a lot of things. You gotta adapt. So share a little bit of the journey of leaving small town to, sitting right here. Yeah, man. I'll tell you what. I think there's a theme to this. With anything good I've tried, there's always been some laughter. There's always been some doubt. You know, we talked about this before we jumped on here. There's always been a little bit of that with every cool thing. So I went to a small town. Uh, Martinsville, Virginia is where I went to, where I'm from. Went to high school at Bassett. And I'll never forget. I was always like a cross country runner. And all of a sudden I wanted to switch and be a kicker of the football team, right? Big chant, big, big risk. Made no sense. But to me, it did. I wanted to do it. And I'll never forget. I did it. And a lot of people laughed. A lot of people like didn't think it made sense. And then my very first kick, man, I'll never forget how nervous this can be. We're playing like one of the best teams and it comes down to, it's 14-14. I've never even kicked a field goal in a game before. And it's coming down to me. I see it. They're getting to the middle of the field. I know what's going down. And, you know, I kick a game winner and I proceed to have a great season. You know, at the beginning, everyone laughed. At the end, no one laughed anymore. Like I was, I was a kicker. It was all state honorable mention. I got it figured out, right? Um, I graduated. I went to Virginia, sorry, I went to Virginia Tech. Love Virginia Tech. And I remember Zeb and I, we started managing an artist, KJ, who still mm. makes music for ClickUp today. A lot of people laughed at us at the beginning. Why are you managing a rapper? Why are you wasting your time with that? But then we had a little song on the radio. And then we went on tour with Mac Miller and Wiz. And then, you know, people weren't laughing as much anymore. Fast forward again, you know, I go to work at Cvent, And I'll never, never forget this moment. I became one of the youngest managers at the company. And I had to give some, like, speech in front of a lot of people. And I botched it. I mean, mm. I... As a kid, I used to stutter a lot. They used to call me stutter ham instead of cunning ham. And uh, it just it came back out. I'd never been in front of that many people. And I t- 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 you know, stuttered. Mm. And man, it it was frustrating. I was like, I'm never going to do that again. And I want to I want to speak on stage. I want to I want to feel mm. good up there. So I did a lot of Toastmasters, a lot of a lot of work at that and practiced. And you know, now I speak a lot and people don't laugh anymore. I think there's been a, a common theme throughout. But then I went to, then after college, um, you know, work, so I worked at C events. Really working my way up there. And then I left Cvent after I kind of gotten my stock money and things had kind of, I felt it hit my ceiling there. Mm-hmm. And then there's Zeb, you know, who I'd been working with in college. And he said, look, this company that we were working on, I've really grown it. You know, I could really use a sales guy. So I took a huge risk. My family thought it was crazy because I was already set up at this company, Cvent. It was, you know, it was public. Things were great. Great career. Safe. But I was like, I'm just going to take her. Something feels right about this. So I up and left DC, moved down to Charlotte. 
to work for a six person company with Zeb and I think it was only three or four at the time actually. And we grew that to do to do really well. And again, huge risk. Um, people probably thought it was weird, questioned my decisions, but as we did well, people didn't question it as much. Um, then we went on, so we, did, we started a social media company, did really well, got a lot of cool connections, really met a lot of people in LA. Um, but we knew that that was kind of going to serve its purpose and wouldn't grow forever. There's a ceiling for that. And Zeb, you know, who's always had these near life, ex- near life, uh, near death experiences, really wanted to kind of do something meaningful for the world, like something that changed the world, not just doing social media and stuff. So he wanted to create this app that would like fix social media. And we called it Memory. And at the time, Snapchat's the hottest app out. It has seven seconds and gone. Your best memories, they're just gone, poof. And he was like, let's create this app, Memory. We spelled it M-I-M-R-I, not memory, because no one says it though, it's just memory. And the app was looking to do really well. Started off great, we had a lot of buzz until Snapchat came out, Snapchat memories. And then that was just completely gone. Mm. That, that dream was uh, money, everything we had worked on. I remember in, like publicly saying, memory would be the next, next big app, da, da, da. And that hurt. That was kind of the first like big, what happened here? You know, we just lost. Um, and that's when we had to really jump into something quick. And luckily we had been building on the side. Zeb had really hated project management. He hated that some people would use Asana and some people would use, de- developers would use Jira and the beginners would use Trello and just all your work was in all these different places. He hated it. So he had us build our own. We called it Mission Control Center, MCC. We kind of just kept everything in, in one place ourselves. Mm. And then a lot of people, and we were in Silicon Valley at the time, and they were like, hey, you should you should go after that. Like, make, mm. Even though it seems risky, make a product. Like, no one loves their project management. No one is like over the moon bragging about their project management software. And so we did. So that's kind of the long story short of how we went from, you know, just a regular little social media company in Charlotte, North Carolina, to a pretty, yeah. pretty large tech company in California. But we grew, you know, ClickUp at the beginning again was tough. You know, I remember trying to get our first sales, just making call after call after call. I got turned down so many times, so many times. Because yeah. if the product just wasn't there, we were so new. No one, no one had heard of us. We had no validation. We had no, you know, market differentiators. Uh, but we kept building those things. And we got really scrappy in the early days. I remember we built a program to allow us to see all the negative reviews of mm. our competitors. And then we would try to find these people and reach out and say, hey, look, I get why you don't like them for this reason. We didn't either. Here's a feature we built you might like. And just being very genuine and we- real in the early days. And, you know, again, with, with ClickUp, people definitely doubted us. Even investors doubted us early on. And, you know, it's not the case anymore. I think we have a lot of people that realize what we're doing and what we're building towards. Yeah, it just comes back to you tried a bunch of things. You adapted like if you're doing anything in life or business or investing, like there's a time where your portfolio has to shift a little bit. It's got it. Right? Like there's a time where- You might have to pivot. Yeah, you have to pivot. And usually it's like ego and pride, which is fair because you can put a ton of time and energy and money, reputation on the line. I want to come back to the stutter. I want to come back to what we're doing right now is speaking and communicating and especially with you starting to build a personal brand, if someone is trying to go on stage, which by the way, I believe a statistic or some study shows that people fear public speaking more than they do death. They do. They do. And so why is that number one? And how can someone, if they have a stutter, they don't have confidence or certainty to go on stage, number one, why do they fear it? Number two, how can they overcome that to be a better communicator? I'm so glad you asked because it it takes time, right? One thing I've learned in life is if you are afraid of something, you probably should try it. You should probably go after it because it's usually not as scary as you think. And it's usually so much more rewarding. Like, you know, I've seen you on stage. You know how good it feels to crush mm-hmm. the stage. Everyone's clapping. Everyone's looking at you. I mean, I just got back from a wedding, you know, in which I was the minister at a wedding. Yeah. And it felt so good to finish and take them on this emotional roller coaster. But if you're at home... If you're terrified of public speaking, if you really want to try it out, start off with Toastmasters. It is the easiest way to start. There's so many, the, the community there is so nice. It's designed to help you. There's no reason why anyone should not go to a Toastmasters class. You'll make good friends. It's quite cheap. And they're in your city. You're, they're in almost every city. You can even start them virtually if you like. But that's, that, that's just the first and foremost, Toastmasters. Two, if you want to take it to the next level, find a speaking coach. Mine is Kobe Madero in San Diego. He's incredible. But find a speaking coach. Find someone who's going to teach you how to enunciate, how to pause. Because for me, again, it's very tough. I get so excited. I've probably even spoke quite fast on here because of that coffee shot I should have <laughs> taken probably before. But 
it's it's very easy to not notice things. It's very easy to not know what to do with your hands, how to follow your motions. It's very easy to go on tangents, not to be able to look people in the eye. There's so many different things in public speaking, more than just getting up and speaking. It's also the content of what you're saying, how to tell a story, how to make points, how to, how to do it with a PowerPoint background, how to do it without. Um, there, there's so many elements of speaking you won't know. So the first thing is Toastmasters. Second thing is getting a speaking coach. But the third thing, and I learned this from Andy Frasilla. He mm -hmm. made it so simple for me. One, to, to my opinion, one of the best speakers you'll ever see on a podcast in person. He knows how to pump you up, man. He also knows how to calm you down. All Andy told me was, he's like, dude, because I was like, man, I want to get better, man. I, I really want to get better. Mm -hmm. I think I'm doing something, but I want to get, I want to be a killer like you. Mm -hmm. And he was like, it's just at best. It's just at bats. And that's where I, he probably even got the phrase when I said it earlier. Just swinging more, just talking more. He was like, why do you think I built this stage in first form? He built this, there's a, there's a stage in there. And his company's massive. And he speaks, I think it's, I don't know if it's every week, every two weeks, whatever it is. And he's in there speaking to them, especially at the beginning in the early days. And he was like, yeah, it was good to get the company pumped up. But he's like, mm. I was also using it for at bats. He mm. was getting more of the stage and, get, and doing it more. And he's like, now it's it's so much easier. And and like everything in life, like what we're doing here, I know that if I start doing two of these a week or two, you know, five a month, I'll get better. I'm sure you're getting great as many as I've been watching you do over the past two weeks. So at bats is the last one. Really don't be afraid to try it. And then start doing things at home. Like I think like once a week, I'll just turn on my computer or even just my phone as a voice memo and just and just talk and just get better at it. So practice as much as you can, do Toastmasters, but don't, like, make sure you get in front of some people as well, but don't be afraid of it. Because what's the worst that can happen, right? I think also if you take a step back and look at it, like, who's really gotten up and just completely embarrassed themselves as much as they think they are? You usually don't. And do people even think about it two days later? Even if someone, even, even if you have seen someone completely botch it, you don't hate them later. You don't have any, mm. if anything, you want them to get better to. You want them to improve, because you know how it feels to get up there. So. It's really not that bad. What do you think? I've seen you crush stage. Like, what, what kind of helped you get there? I remember the first time seeing you on stage before I met you, and I was like, man, he's calm. You know, you're so calm up there. How do you, how do you keep that composure? I think it's, you talk 100 miles an hour, which is why I love you, dude. Oh, yeah, I have a lot to say. So it's like, yo, just be you. I know me. You get up there and just boom, boom. <laughs> and then there's other times where I'm like, oh, hyped up, right? So I think it's just like being you. One thing that was like quantum shift in my brain to be like, okay, let's start making content. I know I'm different. I know I have a lot to share and blah, 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 right? Was I value my opinion about myself more than somebody else. It's hard to do. So what is happening, I believe, is you fear going on stage because you value Sally and the crowd Ooh. and their opinion more than your own. I didn't so, think of it that way. So it's, why is Andy one of the best communicators on stage? Because he values his own opinion. He knows what he's going to share with you, has likely worked in his life and his business. And guess what? His message may not be for everyone. And so this is not for everyone, but it is for someone. And then That's two, chop that one up. <laughs> <laughs> so I value my opinion more than somebody else's. And number two, when I'm building out something that I want to share or communicate or a presentation, content online, I try to always go, don't use I, use you. And so those, those two things have helped a lot is I value myself more than, than you, you value me essentially. Right. But it's not about I, it's about you. So it's, you can get invested into real estate by using other people's money, other people's time. I've done it. Here's how it's helped me. Certain Here's how things you like, can do it. Yeah. Now I have a question for you because I love what you said. But think of me, people are not there yet. How do you get to that point where you value your opinion so much more than everyone else? Because that is probably one of the biggest things that hold people back is the ego and all that. How do you get to that point? Yeah, I think it's like all the other things. It's when, when I think of communication, which is arguably one of the most valuable skill sets, if not the most valuable skill set, is understanding what you want, who you are, in every area of life. And how to get it across. How to get it across, how to pronunciate, how to whisper a little bit, how to yell and get people excited, <laughs> right? But it comes down to confidence, right? We communicate better when we're confident. How do we get confident? By being certain. 
How do we be certain? Being consistent. Showing up. Showing up, right? So for Andy Frisella, it may be going to the gym every day. Do you know he does? It could be instead of sending an email, create a Loom video to record yourself. How, how can I get better at communicating, being consistent in other areas maybe that build up that certainty and confidence to say, hey, what I'm communicating, I'm, I'm very certain about, I'm very confident about because I've done it and you can too, right? And times that I've botched usually is I've let other people get in my own head. Like right before I'm about to go up on stage, it's like, oh, you, uh, you know, like it's just like a natural projection. Mm -hmm. And then my insecurities will come out like, oh yeah, I do need to breathe before I go up there. They'll come out loud if you let them. Yeah. And it's like, the fuck are you telling me <laughs> what to do? Like you need to breathe. I'm chilling. I'm, this, yeah. I'm chilling. Let's go. And, uh, and, and so that, that's one thing I've learned. And what's crazy is I hired a coach as well. Shout out to Petey. I'm going to have him on here. He's a pastor. So nice. Who is sharing a message on a pretty consistent basis? All the time. And you have to be powerful. Yeah. It has to take them to emotions. Exactly. It has to tell stories. It has to have a call to action at the end. And so it was kind of like what I was telling our boy Chris. We can go get Jeff Bezos on the podcast, but the guy that's had a pizza shop for 50 years may technically be more applicable, more valuable in this certain area, right? So it's the same thing with communication and hiring a coach. Andy Frisella, not to take anything away from him, great. But if you go to church, the pastor has probably spoken on stage a hundred times more than Andy. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're always doing it. So building a cadence, building up, you know, North Star, hey, this is what I want you to take. By the way, I get out of here. Here's the problem. Here's the solution. Here's, you know, action steps. Like there's 900 ways to build out an outline with it. But Petey, again, shout out to Petey. I'm going to have him on the show and kind of walk people I'm through. I'm going to watch his because I want to learn from him too. But isn't that unique, right? I was like, Wait. I never even thought of it that way. See, I guess my coach wasn't necessarily a public speaker like this. He was an actor. And so I guess he almost moved into it from there because he's used to training people how to be. So most uh, like that he's, he's more than just teaching me how to speak. He's teaching me how to look, how to like, like a really cool thing he taught me was he's like, I need you. Like he knows I was, I was trying to get this one point home. And he's like, I want you to think back to that moment when like you guys were almost out of money. You know, mm -hmm. like he was like, put yourself in this, in that place and then say that line again. And man, it changed everything. So he mm -hmm. told my, he changed my entire way of thinking about speaking. So it's mm -hmm. like the next time I tell you about, you know, click up stuff times, I need to, Think back to when we were in San Francisco and we were wondering, how, are did, we how did you it? feel at that time? Yeah, how did you feel? And then get in that place again and then speak it out. It's like, you can't, you can't replicate that otherwise. Yeah. And then people can feel it. And so that, mm -hmm. that took me, I had to remember that actually as we're doing this podcast. I'll just remind myself. Yeah. There's a lot of small things. I'm sure like the pastor could tell you, Petey, has a cool name, Petey the pastor. Petey the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Petey the pastor probably knows how to, how to change his inflection. Cause think you gotta, it's almost tougher for them too. Cause you gotta, the same people are seeing you almost every time. You gotta keep them interested. You got to bring him something new. You can't just come with the same old speech. You can't use a template. And guess what? He has to relate to a 15-year-old and a 75-year-old. That's another part I even think of. You know, when I go to a tech conference, I know my audience, right? Mm -hmm. I know what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. But in church, and you got new people coming in, new people you have to, you know, sign up and stuff. Yeah, and I don't know if this is true or not. As I say that, I do say this is not for everyone, but it is for someone. So sure, I do agree. Like maybe the 75-year-old doesn't need to hear that message today. Maybe the 15-year-old does. But I also, in a sense, disagree as well. It's, it's like, like, who's to say that? Yeah, exactly. It's, oh, you're going to hear, it's like watching a movie. This scene may be somebody's favorite part. This other scene may be someone's favorite part, right? And it's, you know, colliding it together. Uh, so who has helped you the most? In my career? Mm-hmm. I've been very beneficial, man. I've been around some awesome people, but number one is Zeb. By far, number one is Zeb. I mean, we spent, what, almost four years working together, living together in a house. And I mean, I know that I know I was a good salesperson, a pretty good overall employee prior to like fully living and working with him. But after fully being around him, I became a machine. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say a machine because of the habits that were taught, the way to be more efficient, because each and every day we woke up and we were working long hours. Each and every day we woke up, what did you get done today? What are you going to get, I'm oh, sorry, what did you get done yesterday? What are you going to get done today? That was what we did every single week. What did you get done today? 
what are you going to, I was like, what'd you get done yesterday? What do you get done today? And that just really helped me out a ton. And then with that, he'd say, okay, I see you did this, this, and this. You could have done it this way. You could have done it that way. So which each day he kept making me more efficient with just a couple of things. Where's your, where's your reminders? How are you reminding yourself? How you remind yourself things is huge because you, if someone just says, oh, my brain, I don't care if they're the smartest person in the world. It's not how you should remind yourself because you should free your brain for everything else to be creative, to take things in. Mm. If you're sitting here to remember, oh, eight o'clock after this, why would you do that when you have something that can remind you on your computer, on your phone? Mm. Let that, let that thread go. Free that for something else because you only yeah. have so much capacity every day. So I got really strong at reminders. Then I became really strong at trying new things and learning new things because we only had four of us at the beginning. Mm. So we all had to try something new. Like we really had to do a lot in a short period of time. So he'd be like, okay, this is how you learn it. Here's a book. Here's a YouTube video. Here's how you break it down. And here's how you put it to action. Let's test. And so I had a really cool playing ground to test. And I had a really good support system afterwards. And then every week, you know, again, we do these big, we'd, we'd all read a book and then we'd all report the book back. And then we talk about it. And so, hey, I learned this from this book. And then Zeb would learn from me. And then Zeb would report his book. And I'd learn from him. And then we're always working together. So I could say, hey, man, I really tried running these Facebook ads because mm. I did at the beginning. I was running our Facebook. Am I the best to do it? No. But back then I had to learn. And he was like, okay, good job here, but did you try this? You know, just ask new questions. And the value of just learning how to try anything is is really the most valuable thing you can ever find. Like just learning to try something because you don't know what you can get done. And learning new skills is very huge. But also knowing as you learn new skills, sometimes it's not best for you and you should offload that. And that's fine. But you learn that by trying. Absolutely. Why should people come work with you guys at ClickUp? Yeah, so if you want to come work at ClickUp, there's so many reasons why to come work with us. Number one, you can grow very fast at ClickUp. We have no problem promoting anyone. We have no problem letting anyone grow. Um, we also would t will invest in you and teach you. You know, we will give you we will give you finances to go take courses. We'll give you the time to do so. We don't we don't manage you in the same ways as everyone else. We want you to have we give you goals. We want you to help. We want to help you get to those goals. It's not really about we need you to put in all these insane hours. Some people want to. Some people like to work a little more. Sure, um, but at the same time, it's it's more flexible. And we we Cut encourage the shit, you, bro. Tell me the cool stuff. They can work virtual. You can work virtual. You can. I mean, sixty five percent of the company, I would say, is remote. Yeah. You can work virtual. I mean, there is unlimited PTO. So, I mean, you can obviously within reason, but you can take PTO. You can work from everywhere. I get travel your KPIs all the time. done. Can you do it in twelve hours? Can you do it? Can you do it in eight hours? Yeah. Great. Get it done. So you can get your KPIs done. We have amazing leaders. We promote fast. We do these things, right? Like I mean, I've seen people go from brand new to the company to high up in a short yeah. period of time. If you're grinding and, you, and you're taking that path and you're asking what needs to be done to grow and, and you're completing it, we will get you there. Uh, lastly, you can really build something at ClickUp. Like you mm. can really stand out at ClickUp. We reward our people. We just had you know, a meeting last week in which we're giving away equity you know, to those who crush it, which our equity is valuable at this point. So we're giving away performance awards. We're, we're really highlighting these people, putting them on a scale, giving them awards. Um, really quick, though, that's huge. The, the, when I say cut the shit, that's the stuff I'm like, yeah, yeah. that's... That's, that's shit you massive. want. That's massive because you can work from a computer. You might have to go here. You might have to go here. But you guys are throwing like events. You know everyone under the sun, right? So like they come to an event or they can get around this person. So there's a ton of intangibles as well. But a multi-billion dollar company that brings in talent that pays you a good paycheck to hit your KPIs. Oh, and you have huge upside. Huge upside. Maybe owning a piece of the company. That you know, that's, that's on a nice trajectory. We give you a laptop. We give you you know gym memberships. All and these it's things. relevant. Everything's relevant. We want we want you to be a better person. You're in an industry that's not on the. Eh. Everyone uses project management for the most part. Almost everyone uses it, and if they're not, they will soon. Mm. So you're. In, I mean, you're in the number one space in tech, arguably. I'm pretty sure it's past CRM. So yeah, you're arguably number one space in tech. You're touching everything, right? And we have and we have every type of role. Whether you just want to do bug testing, whether you want to do copywriting, we have every type of role. Yeah. And you can learn. So the cool thing is like, we will we will build you, we will grow you, and you can jump into other positions. So if you want to be a developer but you're not there yet, we can put you in something and help you get there. Yeah, that's huge. That's Culture is so massive. And so if someone's on the fence, they highly need to consider submitting something somewhere, wherever yeah. that is, clickup.com. Clickup.com slash careers. Hit yeah. us up. I'm Chris at clickup.com. I'm super helpful. There we go. What else are you focused on, man? What else is going on in life? Yeah, man, I'm focused on, again, you, you see me, I'm really focused on building ClickUp's brand. That is my number one. That's what I think about every day. I also want to build my own with that because I think it helps me grow ClickUp's because I want to become someone that other influencers know and look towards so I can get other influencers to use and talk about ClickUp in a very natural way. Um, you know, I really want to see us through, through. I want our social media to grow. I want our ads to look better. I want people to think work and think ClickUp. I, as for my personal brand, I want to start doing way more content. I want to start helping, 
if there's other people who need help with creating content as well, I want to help them. You know, I really want to teach people what I've learned. Um, and again, it's not all about me. It's that I know the people. It's that I've been around everyone in almost every space. So I want to mm-hmm. start really utilizing my connections more. I think I have so many connections that people need and I'm very welcome to give. Uh, so I think I need to find a, a cool way of doing that. I think. Yeah, we should chat a little bit more on like a simplified structure so you're enticed and it's mutually valuable to say, hey, Tyler, here's John Smith. You got to get him on the show. Yeah, right? yeah. And I'll mm-hmm. be out in LA doing like these tours and whatnot or Vegas or we can hop on a Zoom, this and that. I can lie to you, so many people in both those cities you named. So many great people. Yeah, let's let's do it, man. That would be huge. And uh, you said, I want to start. Well, you're doing it right now. Yeah, I'm doing it right now. I think I mean... I want to, um, like, I do it. I do it just out of the kindness of my heart, but I think there's a better, more systematized way. Yeah. So I think I need to sit and just think of what that is. I've been so involved with ClickUp um, that I would like to, to do some things myself a little more. So definitely looking for that, too. I, I want to help other people with what I've done. Like, I think I've really mastered how to how to take a brand and how to make it omnipresent mm. and create good content across every single platform. So if people need that, I'd love for them to hit me up for that as well. Yeah, you help a lot in that area. How, how uh, exactly are you doing that and someone that's getting started or even a essentially an expert that may have a bigger following than you and more quote unquote experience, why should they, you know, consider getting some some assistance from you? The main thing that makes me stand out is I have I've been able to test, right? I worked under Dan Fleischman, in which we ran massive, massive social campaigns for Dan Blazerian's Ignite, for Sugar Bear Hair, for Celsius, for all these major brands. And then with ClickUp, I'm now in the tech space, which again is arguably where a lot of things are moving with AI and all that's where most of the jobs are are coming from, right? So now it's like I've spent big budgets. I've taken ClickUp from no social presence, from no presence at all to, to having a large presence and to being very consistent with it. And I've tested new things. Like you said earlier, I've taken tons of at-bats. I know it works. I know it doesn't work especially at a, at a large company. And I know how to stand out in front of large competitors. So that is where I think I had a lot of value. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think finding a way to connect your circle a little more intentionally, like you said, I think that would be uh, massive because, sure, like uh, you want to help friends out, this and that, but it just like removes friction as well. 100%. Right? So I think spending some time there would be would be huge. And then whether I'm right or wrong, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but just making that content where you're like, hey, just getting started or intermediate or expert. Boom, boom, boom. Here's what I've seen other people do very well. What's worked for me as well, too. Um, what else, man? So you got you got ClickUp. You're building out the personal brand. Um, what else you got going on? Yeah, man. I think I think what I want to get back to, too, is I, I, I used to take some crazy crazy chances on like social plays, right? Like, I don't know if you heard a story about when I faked to win the lottery, but that's a, <laughs> it's a huge one for us, right? And, I, and I, I wanna find ways to do that again. Like, as crazy as that sounds, faking I won the lottery brought so much attention, brought so many things, opened so many doors for me. And all I did was Photoshop, yeah, Photoshopped a lottery ticket. Zeb was a genius who had kind of, you know, hacked, I wanna say hacked Twitter, but he really kind of learned how to crack, how to boost things on Twitter before anyone else. This before there's any fake news, anything like that. No one had really tricked the media before. So we made the entire media think that I won the lottery. And I just Photoshopped this ticket. I was at Virginia Tech. And I'm like, hey, look, my life has forever changed. And then every single you know, news source put it out there. And then within minutes, you know, so many people following me. I'm taking new, you know, I'm taking interviews like this. And I'm kind of writing it out like, hey, I'm giving this money back to everyone. You know, I kind of made a big spectacle. And then Morgan Freeman's following me. All these crazy people following me. It was a blast. But then it got out of hand. You know, and then it got somewhere like, I was riding it out. I was having a lot of fun. I was going to the bars, being like, hey, shots on me, you know, until my card overdrafts. And I'm like, this is, I have to like bring this home and make this real. Uh, but it, it did. It brought me so many things. When I went to go get my first job at Cvent, they're like, oh, you're the lottery guy. Like, I was like, look, I'll leave now. But they actually loved it and thought it was like a good marketing play. What I'd like to get back to this year is, is finding cool ways of doing more content. Like, I want to do this content of talking, but I want to do something larger than life again. So it gets everyone talking. So I think I need to get back to thinking big. I think because we're such a large company. I think I've just focused on the smaller things, but I, I want another big play like that. I want, I want to do something uh, off the wall, like, you know, like managing a rapper is off the wall, but it, it was a great lesson for us. So I want to get back into those things. Yeah. I'm noticing that as far as like most people are creating content, most people are not whatever, however you want to look at it. Like we're so in the space that like we think everyone around us is creating. Right. Yeah. And it's, you know, actually not the, case. not the case, but also if you're in it, 
how do you create separation? I'm noticing there's like, okay, everyone's stuff starting to look the same. It is. Same little letters, same blocks. Yeah. If you, like, we have to be innovating on our content. I think if we don't, you see how quickly, like, first that content was brand new and everyone loved it, right? Yeah. Everyone's trying to copy Hermosi and whoever. You have to find your own, your own thing. Which, what do you think that next thing is? I don't want to give too many secrets away. Now, I think it's I think it's more it's more visual. It's more not just showing yourself in the text on screen. I think it's getting more visual mm -hmm. and giving more of that 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 next part of what people want to see. Uh, I think it's breaking things down that's going on in the world and and showing them how it relates to them in a cool way. It's still you talking about it, but not just you talking about it, showing them. You know, with, with this green screen, we can put anything we want behind us. And I think having screens like that are definitely going to be a big part of, of new content. But I think also learning how to you know keep keep quick cuts. Uh, not just jump cuts, but actually cutting it at times it makes sense to keep attention. You know, right now a lot of people zoom in, they zoom out, they mm -hmm. do whatever to, to hold that attention. I think we're going to find new and, and impressive ways of that that I'm still trying to learn what they are. Um, I think also what you say, how you say it, how you're delivering the message, and what resources you have at the end that you're giving to them. How would you structure a, and this kind of goes back to being on stage and presenting, right? Like having, you fall back to usually your habits. So let's make sure that those habits are good habits. Right? It's like when you're training a salesperson, if they came from selling cars, use, use cars, they may actually have some good habits and they can sell high ticket. Oh, for sure. But they may have bad habits and it's very hard to change those bad habits. you got to change their thoughts, their daily actions, their mindset. And you're like, I actually don't even want to hire you. It's going to take too long. So how can someone follow an ideal structure and a video presentation like what are like two to three things that they got to get across and i understand every platform's different i understand that are Not you talking yet. for 10 minutes a minute an hour look the generic answer would be like you know everyone says have a great hook have a great hook and, and that's true you have to have something that catches attention at the beginning but i think it's not what everyone thinks it is now like i see so many people so scrolling through tiktok or whatever you know mainly tiktok or the, the quick platforms it's like here's how you can like stop scrolling and da, 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 and trying to do something like that. It's like, look, those, those worked again, like a little while ago, but people are again, getting immune to that. And a lot of times now they see you trying too hard to hook in their attention. So I think you have to make, you make a strong statement. You know, you make something, it, it could be ambiguous. Like you said, you were going to hit your goals this year. You know, really talk to the people as if I'm talking to you. Like in the beginning, I wouldn't say something like that to get your attention in a conversation. Mm -hmm. You want to say, Hey, Tyler, here's 10 things that are going to make your life 10 times better. Right. I would just say, Hey dude, like I love what you're doing, but have you ever thought of this? You know, I think like little hooks like that can get better. But as for the type of content, the formula, all that, I, I think it's, I, I, I do still think there's some need to, to know what you want to talk about. I think there's a need to to pay attention to what's going on in the world, to see what those things are. Like, obviously, when I was doing things on ChatGPT, they perform better, right? Because everyone's already talking about it. They're looking for it. They're, they want to see it. They want to know more about it. So I think it's understanding that, looking for the future, but then understanding how to really take it down. So... I think you see an idea, then you sit, maybe you talk it out with, with your team or whoever, mm -hmm. someone you think is creative, your friends. What, are you, what is your take on this? What is your take? And then I think going from there and saying, okay, then thinking about your audience. What can I help them learn? Mm -hmm. And then by that, now, now you've taken about what, what you want to talk about, how you can help them learn. Then you naturally talk about it. Maybe you have your bullet points. Like, okay, mm -hmm. I, know that, I know I can help them learn X, Y, and Z. Here's how you take one bullet, talk about it. Take another bullet, talk about it. And sometimes I might, I, I wouldn't say do every video the same. Don't do one just 10 minutes. Every yeah. single time, unless you really want to be that that super long form YouTuber, I think it's good to do how we are. Take your long form. You're gonna find short term gold in there, but make sure you switch it up per platform. Even if it is just TikTok and YouTube Shorts, switch it up a little bit because I do feel like they punish you for putting the exact same video on IG Reels as you do on TikTok. And so I think you find ways to create. You learn what your niche, niche is for each. I think you. Here's the easiest way too. After you've done this, you've taken your day in which you look at the content, what you're gonna say. Then after you also have a day in which you look at how well it performed. Like you said, data data. So have this, whether mm -hmm. it just be an Excel sheet, whatever, have someone going in and taking this video and say, hey, okay, highlight this one green. This one got 20,000 views. This is what we wanted. This one got 300 views. This is what we didn't. Why? 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 Review it every single week. All of a sudden, you'll start seeing less red and you'll start seeing more green because you know why things are green and getting more views and you see why things are red and getting more bad views. You'll see the trends, but not if you don't take the time to report them, sit and think on them. And sometimes that data is false data. And what I mean by that is a 20,000 view video on TikTok is not as important as a 20 view. 100%. Because 10 people buy and zero people buy. With so you should definitely 000. look, that's a good point. You should really have your metric down. If your metric is people buying, if that's your main one call to action, then bam, that's huge. It's yeah. way more valuable for you. And there can be multiple things that derive success from creating content. But just to share like a very quick example, as of today, my most viewed video on TikTok is talking about 
um, Mark Zuckerberg buying a farm. That's all that was. To go escape. But as I reflect back on that, I didn't make money from that. I got eyeballs, sure, some followers that could eventually turn. But what if it was Mark Zuckerberg is buying land, a farm, to escape the matrix and get off grid? That's why I'm a real estate developer and why I accumulate land. If you want to invest with me, comment below. Well, you see what or, you should still do. You should remake that video. Remake it that way. Exactly. Yep. And that's, that's what the, the big the big players do. It They start remake. They make the same video like four times. Especially one that we really think it should go, or one that does go, and they, but it didn't get the, the, the like actual drive they wanted, the CTA. Yeah, it's like we know Gary V's, Andy, Dan, oh, yeah. Grant Cardone's story almost better than our own because they keep telling it. They keep finding ways to intertwine it in other different lessons. Exactly, and it's comes back to consistency, and that's why they're very good at communicating because they're saying the same four or five things in different words. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Gary V, he wants to buy the Jets. He comes from Russia, blah, blah, whatever. Like, there's just things you can just, boom, top of the head. What are those couple things about Chris that makes Chris Chris? Chris is from a small town. He talks fast. He's always excited. He's always going to bring the energy. He's always going to help whoever he can. And he's always going to try crazy shit. That's me. I'm always going to try crazy shit. And at the end of the day, I'm not, I don't need the Jets. I don't, I don't need all that. I want to travel. Like, I just want to, be, I want to have freedom and I want to travel. And I want people to realize that I learned how to unlock getting eyeballs because that is all I care about, getting those eyeballs. That's big for me. And driving the right traffic and giving value to people and different types of resources. Because at the end of the day, you can make content get in front of people, but can you actually help them after they watch that content? Mm -hmm. That is what I'm trying to build on the next level. Why should people travel? Why should the entrepreneur watching this video? take the trip right now, not when they hit that next KPI? Damn good question. First off, you and I need to take a trip again soon. That's so good. many reasons to travel. One, it just unlocks you to a different way of thinking. Two, it heals you. I remember when I was going through one of the hardest times of my life, I just went and lived in Europe for a while. And it's crazy how quickly being in a new culture, meeting new people can just directly heal you. It is insane. Uh, number three, it, it's understanding the world. It's seeing new things. It, it, I don't know how to explain it, but the way I am when I get back from a new country, all of a sudden just new thoughts just start popping in my head. Mm. Things I never would have thought of. The simple things are really start moving faster. So a lot of times people think, oh, when I travel, it might take me out of my routine and slow me down at work. I don't think so. I can bump right back into a routine after traveling, but my brain is just different. I'm thinking bigger. I'm also thinking about a different type of person that, you know, when you stay in, if you stay in one environment, that's the only environment you'll think of. But as soon as you start traveling, you start thinking about other environments and, and your brain works differently. And four, I think it refreshes my brain. Mm -hmm. Something about waking up in a new place, knowing nothing, trying a new, new coffee shop, exploring a new rooftop, seeing some kind of, seeing some type of new architecture. Everything there just changes everything for you. So if you haven't tried traveling, you should, and you can work wherever. There's so many different co-working spaces. Um, you know, things with the internet, there's no reason for you not to travel everywhere. And if you want to save some money, it's a great place to do it too. People are really traveling. There's all yeah. uh, the passport bro culture, whatever you want to call it. People are really traveling and working in different areas. So there's a lot more people you can meet out while you're doing this too. Yeah, I always say it collapses time of understanding, especially if you are an entrepreneur, you quickly identify where there's choke points in the business. Ooh, that's right? a good one. But you can also see where the team's doing very well. Right. So it's not always like a negative connotation. Yeah. It's like Sally is good. She stepped up and I was gone. She, she caught these three things that I would usually have to do. Boom. This is exactly why I'm going to surprise her with a bonus or I'm going to give her a vacation or in reverse. I don't know why Sally came to mind, but Sally, you need to step it up. Yeah. Right. Or, you missed this one. You, you could have done this. Or I could have done this to put you in a better position to boom, boom, boom. All the above. And it's exactly how you're sitting right here, dude. Like we went out to LA, we met in person and never even would have thought at that time you'd be on the podcast show. Never, never thought it either. It's crazy. You just meet, you talk, but then you, but then you watch people grow, right? Cause after I know you on a deeper level, you know, like even though we only around each other a certain amount of time, we still talked about some cool things. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, I really respect how he moves and how he looks at the world. And so then I start watching your stories and I see what you're into. Then I see who you're helping. And say, okay, I get who you help. I get who, I see where I can help you now. 
Mm -hmm. Right, and I see you helping others. Why would I want to help you too? So it, there's a lot of value in being in a new city and meeting someone new. Had I never went to Columbus, Ohio, and met Carson, I might have never met you. Mm -hmm. Right, so you start you start going back and connecting the dots of when you travel and when you put yourself out there and when you meet those new people. Had I not started creating content, maybe I wouldn't have met met him. You know, mm -hmm. like there's a lot of different things, a lot of different like things that come into play. So you have to start taking these chances, going to these places, getting on these podcasts. What are some things that I can do right now to like make a substantial leap? And what you're doing in your business? Mm -hmm. I think you're already doing a lot, man. Um, if I had to think about it, I would say you, you already make a ton of good content. I would love to see you actually taking your day-to-day -day and working in public. Mm -hmm. right? like I, see, I get to see you talking when you're off work. But I want to know what it's like when you go close that real estate deal. I want to see you on the, on the ground floor looking at this space saying, this is the one that's going to make me some money, which you have actually done that. I saw you and Jeff doing a yeah. few, but I want more of that. Yeah, yeah. I'd love more of you saying like, you know, working, sitting with someone or even just helping someone for free, you know, like picking one day and saying, okay, this is someone who knows nothing about real estate. Mm. It might be me because I know nothing. I'm trying to learn and buy something too. Maybe we do it together. It could it'd be something like that. But taking, showing someone who could be sitting in my shoes like me who knows nothing about real estate and sitting and saying, here's how you know nothing. Here's how I would help you. Here's the first thing I would show you because there are so many people. Dude, there's so many people who are just, just like it is public speaking, terrified to get into real estate. They're just like, I want to go to someone who knows that. Right, which is good for your business, but there's also a lot of people who want to be you, dude. There's, one, there's people who want to make a business in this and really need to right now because maybe the other job is going away soon. Mm -hmm. Real estate's not going away. So I think really taking helping those beginners and saying, I guess I'll help you. But then on the flip side, maybe taking someone who's, you know, making X amount, selling X amount of houses, but saying, hey, do you really want to take it to the to a larger level? Yeah. This is how you do that. And I see a lot of people start making that content for their respective fields. And I think it's, I think it's huge. Yeah, I I agree. Like sharing more like. Just Instagram, for example, like on the story, like turning the phone around versus yeah, like under the hood, like I'm half asleep, getting in the Uber, about to go do a show. This is, this this real, is real life stuff. Life. Like this is what this is what's going on. Got a meeting. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, but also one thing that's like weirdly came to mind while I was down here is probably just because all the chaos in Miami. I'm like, I should probably I should just like get my phone out and just walk up to people on the sidewalk and be like, do you invest into real estate? Why or why not? That content does really well. Yeah. It does so well. Get a microphone. You just get a microphone. It's relatable. Boom. Yeah. This is how I'm investing in real estate. And who knows? Maybe you run into someone who that knows has, who you're going to meet. It could be 500 million, 5 billion in real Especially estate. Especially around here. And it's like, I don't even know who the hell you are. Right? And just a, a, like, it's like running into, let's say, Grant Cardone on the sidewalk. And you're like, do you invest in real estate? Why or why not? And he's like, yeah, I have two plus billion dollars in real estate. It's like, cool, you could have 200 if people knew who you are. I don't even know who you are, right? So it's like, you can speak to any level, no matter what you're doing. And that that immediately, for whatever reason, just came to mind. I'd love to see you do more of all of that. How do we be different? I think that's what I'm noticing is when we watched the Gary Vee video from five years ago where there's a line at the bottom that's like going, it's showing you that the video is about to end. Do you, oh, yeah, you yeah. remember that? Everyone started picking that up, yeah. Then it's the... I guess the hormozy where there's like words popping up and the emojis. Quick I cuts. Yeah, the quick cuts. It's whether any of this is right or wrong, I don't know. I think it's just like more authentic, relatable and doing just different things. That content wins. You can almost tell when you see a TikTok video. I can tell from the beginning, like this one's going to be viral. And it's usually just something that looks generic. It might just be someone just walking in a parking lot at first. You don't know what's coming. You know, you can kind of mm -hmm. tell when someone just took a pretty crazy shot or something's about to come. You can kind of feel it. And also like the man on the street is what they call it when you go interview someone. Man on the street content. People love that because they love seeing just real people on the street. Like that could have been me. Mm. How do you take care of yourself, man? You have a lot going on. You're traveling. You have a lot of uh, responsibility and you're you're doing big things and you're just getting started. So how are you making sure that your, your cup is full? It's a good question. Um, Vitamin G is what I've heard people call it, gratitude. You know, a lot of people say it all the time, but I do really believe in it. I, I, I do have to take time to be grateful for where I'm at and what all is accomplished because it's easy to start looking at, no matter, you you know how it is, as, as much as your business grows, there'll be problems, there'll be things you have to solve, mm -hmm. but you'd be grateful for those problems because at the time, I remember like five years back, we'd have loved to have these problems, right? We'd mm -hmm. love to have, you know, try to figure out the best way to spend our funding and things like that. Um, I think the next one for me is, is the small little things of getting sun in the morning, um, Making sure I, I like the sauna stuff. I really love sitting in the sauna. Yeah, yeah. It's really good for me. We have one in the place. Um, hitting the gym, 
I, I try not to eat. I think eating less is a big thing. I know people are yeah. told me. I really think if you just lower your caloric intake, like whether it be through intermittent fasting, whatever, we really don't have to eat as much as we think. Mm. So just trying to be good there. Um, I'm not perfect in the gym, but I, I do my best there. I, I, so it's something I want to get better at. Do you like running still? Oh, man, I got a foot injury. I used to be a huge runner, and I had this injury in which I don't know if I can run the same like I used to. Um, I'm just getting back in. Dude, I was on crutches for like a year last some, year. Oh, I saw you. Yeah, 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 it was a big thing. So Get some uh, stem cells in there. That's what I've heard. I'm looking into mm. whatever heals it properly. Right now, I'm just happy to have it good, so I haven't pushed back into running, so I'm doing more of the weight stuff. Yeah, I think yeah. I could get better at that anyway. Um, but yeah, I think that's, you know, the, the basis is you read. Meditation is big. But like actually doing it, everyone like talks about. It, but you actually yeah. making the time for it. I set it on my calendar. I know that what what time I'm going to do those things, um, and I sure I might miss it when I'm doing a flight. And da, da, da. But the big rule I really like is not missing something two days in a row. Yeah, right. Miss it one day. Take that one day. You know, like don't be too hard on yourself. Like yesterday, I just got back from the wedding. I'd had fun. I yeah. took the day. You know, and that's fine. Yeah, you're take two. Yeah, it's it's Michael Jordan probably didn't miss two free throws. Yeah, he missed one. He didn't he miss did. back to back. No. And LeBron James is still better, but uh, I mean, I like Mike better. I don't know. Don't miss twice, right? Don't miss twice. And I think that, I mean, I even posted, I think, on my Twitter. And you know, you're asked, like, hey, ask a question. So you want to get a yeah, feel for the more. audience. Yeah, yeah I want to see what, where they're at. Most of the time, when I'm saying I have Chris coming on, he's part of a multi billion dollar company and he's, he's multi, multi billionaire. Time hasn't caught up yet, or he's, making hundred, like whatever it is, when you're throwing those big numbers out, one thing I've recognized, and I even do this, is people ask, what are they doing different? Or what was that, what was that routine they're doing? One thing I've noticed is lifestyle. They're just creating a lifestyle that if they're traveling or they're not traveling, these are the things they consistently hit across the board. But like you said, hey, John Smith, that's super successful. What do you do when you miss the gym? I'm just go the next day. Or guess what? I just don't. Yeah. But you you said it right earlier. If you read the book, The Tools of Titans, it literally makes it obvious. Like Tim Ferriss interviews all the top people and you start seeing all the similarities. Most of them do those things we talked about. They meditate, they get a little sun, they wake up early, exercise a little bit, try to eat. You know, like they do those things. Mm -hmm. The majority of them do those things. They have a, and they have good habits. They have something for reminders. They have something for how they work. It's really that simple. I think everyone overcomplicates it, but it's doing it, then doing it the next day, then doing it the next day. Like actually building these habits and because you get better at them, you get stronger at it. Um, again, same with like, I think treating your job like LeBron, like Kobe treated the game, like being relentless, practicing, being that last person in the gym, taking the next level, being competitive in practice. You know, like work for us is practice and we're practicing getting through your emails in the most efficient way you can, making sure your tasks are good, pushing your employees to do better. Treat it like a game and you'll probably do a lot better. Yeah, and also, one thing I've recognized as well is your why are you wanting to do all those yeah, things? Yeah, yeah. Is What's it the because, Yeah, is it because Tony Robbins started doing cold plunges first? Or is it because that allowed him to operate at a higher frequency to share his message for Ooh. other people to be at a higher frequency? So why are you getting in the sauna? You're getting in the sauna potentially for the same reason why I am. So I'm away from my fucking phone for yeah, five seconds. It does help that out. And then I go... Oh, okay, that sweat felt good. There's all these toxins I coming guess, out. I guess there's health benefits, right? But my number one is the space to go, oh, yeah, I'm probably going to bring that up at one point on a podcast or I'm going to call this person when I get out, right? So just because someone did a cold plunge, a sauna, meditation, whatever it is, one thing I used to say all the time is running ultra marathons. Believe it or not, I know I'm uh, built sideways here. Right. I would go through deep channels in my brain of like meditation while you're 50 miles into a race. And, you know, when you're sitting there and you're breathing and meditating, you're thinking of this, this, and this, that was meditative when I was running. And so it's understanding that meditation is not the same for everyone. It's understanding that work is not the same for everyone. It's, oh, cool, that works for you. But this works for me. I think a lot of us, myself included, get caught up in that. Well, they got to find what works for them. You said it best. So for me, like I can't run anymore, right? But I love to play basketball. So a new med new form of meditation for me, I put my headphones in and I go shoot. If I have a, a big problem, I cannot think through. Like I cannot get the answer. Mm -hmm. I just go shoot. And that problem is on my mind. I'm dribbling, shooting, because it's kind of mindless, right? And it gets everything else off. 
I'm Tony Tyler almost every time I come to it. It used to be running for me. I used to go jog mm. and think through that problem. Now it's just playing basketball. But you should find that for you. Whether it's even just taking a walk, sitting on that treadmill and putting the incline on, or whether it's you know just sitting outside, find that thing for you because it is important to find the way you think through problems. And you got to be doing something by yourself. I think it's because when you're running that long, you're by yourself. You're not talking to anyone. Mm. You're by yourself. When you're shooting a basketball, you're by yourself. So find that time to be by yourself. Get in touch with your mind because too many of us lean on other people. It's mm. good to ask for your opinion, things like that. But it's also damn good to not forget about yourself. Dude, yeah, hiring a speaking coach, another mentor, going to another mastermind, there's a diminishing return. It's there you like, go. It's like eating the slice of pizza, right? It's like after the first one, it doesn't taste as good. No. And at some point, get you know, you, you forget to – you have all this in here. A you lot have, of things you need are there. Dude, it's, it's in your gut. It's in your intuition. It's in your brain. And we go away from that often. Yeah. Tony Robbins didn't get you to where you are now. Like, sure, you might have had people helped you, and there might be some things you learned from him. But at the end of the day, you got you here. You thought about getting into that business. You thought about how to connect the dots. You thought about how to get more clients. That's you. No one else did that. Mm. Couldn't agree more. What can I do for you, bro? You're always doing everything for everyone else. You're the master connector. You're always pouring out. How can I uh, pour into you and or how can someone else that's watching this, listening to this, yeah, man. help you out? What, what creates value for Chris? Value for me is just anytime you know someone who, if you know anyone who is not working as efficient as they could, let me help them. Let me show them, click up. Let me get them a really full trainer that will help train them because I want everyone working as efficiently as they can. And even if it's not click up, you won't hurt my feelings. At least be on some type of project management. Mm. Um, number two, if you know anyone who needs help with, you know, finding proper influencers or kind of just creating a, a social strategy for their company, I think I'm really good at it. I would like to help more people. I've only just done it for my friends and stuff now. And I think I'd like to do it for more um, because I, I've really just mastered it via Click up, and I have I have the programs. I know a lot of the right people. I know like who you have to hire, how you train them. Uh, so I would love to help more people with that. So those are the two things I want. And you let me know what I can do for you, man. Again, I'll help you with more guests. If you want more anything for more clients, I will create any content for you. Anything we need. Yeah, to give you my opinion, because uh, you know it's always right, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen it wrong I, yet. Everything I say came the wrong yet. <laughs> uh, I think one, just from my perspective, is. As an entrepreneur with businesses, the opportunity to create something or an outline or a program or whatever it is to help a company create influencers within the company. I think that's huge. It's very valuable. It's something new. We just tried out and it's really working. And it empowers your people. Uh, it's not for all of them. And you're right? investing in them. You're investing into them. And now you can monetize your employees. Like, although I'm all about having fun and like helping them grow, like, it just helps the data better. It helps giving that bonus. It helps sending them on a paid vacation. And ultimately, what are we trying to do? We're trying to get attention. It helps right? people get to know your company. And so that takes the pressure off the top or the marketing department or sales. Yeah. So I think that's something to think on when you're hitting some that's jump shots. All right. Um, and then <laughs> appreciate that. And then two is you you know a lot of high level people. So I think finding a strategic, simple way to monetize that. Uh, getting them on my podcast show or building something out on the back end. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you just keep doing what you're doing. Um, but I'm going to think on that one too. Maybe there's a different way. Um, but it's got to be something. Yeah. I, I haven't met all these people for no reason. and It's definitely valuable. I love meeting people. We're going to keep doing it. Yeah, and they keep you around for a reason because you're, you're good people. And uh, I've always had great experiences with you, bro. You've always been a lending hand. A lot of people can say, I just want to help people, but <laughs> I've genuinely seen it from you. Same to you, man. So, we'll, keep, we'll keep it rolling. One love, brother. Let's get it. Appreciate you. Yeah, dude.